What's up guys? This is the Roverman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as Spain. And, speak up, and so, so to pick up where we left off, we are taking advantage of a declining Ottoman Empire and pushing to take Athens for our own. So let's crack on. We have the Russians pushing through the Balkans, we have the French pushing through the Middle East. The, the Ottomans are not in a good place right now, so we have secured Greece. Then we are going to secure Athens. And then I want to keep um, preparing for a future war, because I've been told that when my king dies, everyone declares war on me. Um, don't know whether that's true or, or not, but I just, I do know. Um, I really want to be in, a really, in the best position I can for it. So let's deploy all my guns up on the hill here. An infantry wing on the right. An infantry wing on the left. Combine our cavalry on one flank. Pikes on either flank, cover on the right. So the name of the game is To Advance. They do have Azars somewhere, they usually always hide. So I'm expecting as I push up. <clears throat> I'm expecting as I push up they will make themselves known. They usually hide somewhere on one of the flanks. So that's there. Well, one unit of mortars is having a pop. I mean, all my gunners are firing at will, which is fine. Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. Organ gun, Islamic swordsman. Yeah, they're all going to be hidden together in a giant cluster. Mm -hmm. Irish Brigade of Open Death and the Islamic Swordsmen. Let's get ready to see a great big clump of troops show up on the map. I mean, they're not going to change the game or affect the result, really. Just making sure, there we go. There'll be more than one up here. because the right flank's been cleared. At least I'm pretty sure they had more than one unit of Azar. Some of the Muslims are still coming back. Get all of our guns to open fire. We've got a general up here. I mean, this is one Muslim unit that still came back. I mean, these two units are engaging this unit. Yeah, there we go. We've knocked out that garrison unit. So let's bring our men back into the mix. There they are. So Azar are just skirmishes, so I don't expect them to do too much damage. In fact, they're probably... Especially as they're against Grenadiers. Charge them in the flank with the Regimento de Sevilla. We bring in the other regiments. Bring our other cavalry across. Stop our artillery fire. Bayonet charge charging. Because, yeah, there's just not a lot they can actually... Well, they're skirmishes. They're not suited for this sort of action. I mean, I was half expecting my general to die. Yeah, there's no need to chase anyone down except for those guys, because they actually are... They actually are proper units. Let's get my artillery 
get you guys back because you are just provincial cav. Get this infantry to form up into into square. Again, this cavalry was completely running the wrong. I was trying to make it run that way, but for whatever reason, it kept drifting towards us. You guys. It's another unit of Muslim who took some damage, but not enough to make them permanently rout. Yeah, trying to get my infantry out to hopefully try and fire some shots at the uh, Islamic swordsmen. Okay, counter charge them now. Looks like the artillery is fairly useless, so just stop firing. My cavalry will pin them. Then my infantry will charge up and take him out. Supposedly confident. Now they are not. Now they are shaken. And this will only get worse as more and more of my men enter the combat. Take him out. So that should be everybody. So that is... Athens taken and I don't have any real money to hold on to the region so because they're happy relatively happy with us I'm going to spend the rest of my cash or a good chunk of it replenishing what I've got and I might actually split this army in half to try and get back to her. Uh... Oh no! Oh, I'm an idiot. Be demolishing the college, which will make, which will even up, even the odds. Let's fix the governor's palace. Can't fix it. Can't fix anything else. That's all of our cash expended. Our recruitment, our naval expansion is still ongoing. So these armies over here. You guys were suggesting I actually keep them to attack the 13 colonies. And I had a look, and there is an awkward thing about the 13 colonies. They're allied with the French. So if I declare war on them, the French might break their alliance with us, and they're already indifferent. So we don't necessarily want to wind them up too much. New Spain is starting to get a bit antsy with us. So we'll give them... I'll probably give them a uh, state gift next turn. If, if there's anyone I want to keep on side, it's the new Spaniards at least. Yeah, the French are dominating in north in northern Italy, so that's why I would very much like probably a fort of some description or a pair of forts maybe in northern Italy. But forts are expensive. It's forts are quite a few thousand thousand cash. They want Gibraltar, and they're going to give me six grand for it. And uh, yeah. No. Gibraltar is mine. Oh, Swedish priest still working his way along the coast. But still, things are going pretty nicely. So we've got national debt we've researched. And you've gone to Cadence Marching, which I don't want you to do. You go on to New Model Bayonet Drill. Because that'll give us plus two charge bonus for bayonet equipped units and give us access to a couple of good guard units. A couple of tops of government buildings and metal roads in Tunis. In terms of recruitment... Got a galleon in the English Channel, a couple more galleons next turn. So let's hop to. I think it was the Straits of Madagascar, yeah, that was it. This is where I just need to churn out ships, because right now we've got the uh, the capacity to make some real bank is huge. But I've got my new good fleet here 
So I could probably do with building a another um, sort of a watch guard fleet, I suppose. And that would probably be better coming from Plymouth, from Portsmouth, sorry. Probably a third rate and then a collection of thirds and fourths. I think that would be a fair mix. So let's get the ball rolling there. Workers on strike in Morea. Yeah, but they're okay now. So let's rebuild the government building. Let's get you back across to Greece. Let's build you into a church school. Same with this guy here. Let's build build some build some galleys because I want to explore the possibility of maybe taking Istanbul. That would be quite the coup. So let's pick up a general for this force. Let's upgrade their ordnance factory to get some artillery pieces. Let's check Naples to see if we can do any building. I mean, we can upgrade the dockyard, which I should really. So I've recruited these privateers to raid trade region. So let's get this sloop. Hmm, where's the best place to deposit this sloop? I think the answer is nowhere because we want... We are going to have a couple more ports opening up here in Spain. I might upgrade you to a commercial basin and then... Let's work on... Slowly building up a bit of a Caribbean fleet. So then down here... Minus two becomes minus one, which means you guys will chill out. Good news, that frees up another army. Maybe you might go for Istanbul, depending on what it looks like. Let's build a brig to get you over there. Okay, let's find some good cheap upgrades. Cagliari, you can get a governor's barracks. Good! We've got some pirate privateers raiding this trade route. We have got our top tier navy building or growing in strength. Till we get lime juice or steam engines. We could get lime juice fairly quickly, but I'm okay with the current power differential. Let's hit end turn. My agents, one agent's on to, going on to Ankara, the other one is going on to um, Istanbul itself. That will bring us into potentially into conflict with the Russians. And if it did, then I would probably seek peace against the Ottomans. Allow the French to continue to attack them while I secure more of a foothold in Eastern Europe. Or I might take Ankara, then declare... If I could take Istanbul and Ankara, that would be substantial holdings in the eastern Mediterranean. That would really dent the, the um, Ottoman Empire, and it would really prevent them from actually gathering that sort of strength. Okay, the Ottomans never quit. No, the Mughals never quit. Workers on strike in Tripoli. Not anymore, they're not. So I'm not going to exempt them from tax. I want them to have a turn with no public order problems. So we've got another little... Oh, there we go. Let's get you two, sh both these ships over to this trade post. I need to get a fleet over here to protect them. So this force that was currently slowly being recruited in Spain, can now march down south to Morocco. Or they can meet some contingents of... some line infantry contingents. What ships have you got? Junk. So let's send... Well, I say junk. Well, it is junk. I'm just going to quick auto-resolve that because there's a bunch of rubbish ships. 
if I'd captured any, I would have taken them into my service and sent them over to the trade zones. Not interested in chasing them down. Let's get them back, get back to port. Continue to build and expand my fleet. So you can probably... Pretty sure it's 14 is the maximum ships you can get in a navy. So I've got 9 ships now, which means 13. Let's get one more second rate. Good. It's a bit of a concern they might... Well, no, they won't get to Madrid and Tangier in one turn because they've got this force here. It's unfortunate they're going to, they're going to do some damage, so I might dismantle this iron workshop because they're going to break it anyway. But it's good to know the Ottomans are focused around here because we can then slowly keep Tangier reinforced. So I might spend some money building a modern university. Well, I'm already upgrading one of them. And again, that's going to cause my clamour for reform to shoot up. So I might have to recruit not those dragoons. Ooh, Lusitania dragoons. Horse dragoons. Okay, let's just get some... Bog standard light dragoons to act as a garrison for Madrid. Let's go up to London and give this army general ben Benigno Cervante. So let's give them some troops or more troops in the event that the uh, in the event that the Moogles try and attack Britain, which is definitely a possibility. Okay, so now you're going on to building more actual ships. So then I can get my galleons into the into the business of well, my, my trade ports into the business of building galleons. I've got sixteen hundred. Can upgrade one of these vineyards, or I can upgrade, or I could repair actually. Uh, some of these buildings in Athens, especially as we know that they, this is, they are going to be called into duty. So let's take this light galley and have a look at Istanbul. Lightly defended. Certainly ripe for the taking. What university do you have here? Just a college. But I think the Ottomans are suffering because you can see they've got some undeveloped towns, they've got basic roads. Let's get you into Thessaloniki. Let's add to their economic problems. Okay, good. So we do have this army to the south. So let's take this ship out. Let's embark these men aboard ship. Now we know that Thessaloniki is safe. We can sail over to that port immediately. Let's get this light galley out. Maybe send them to go raid Anatalia. Antalya. So the new men can can get to the port. This army can disembark. So I might actually try and get something a bit better than Bandoleros, but then again that's not a massive problem. Push onward to the capital. If we can take Istanbul and build a decent fleet, we can dominate the eastern Mediterranean as well as the west. Excellent. We've done. We've dealt with all this stuff. Okay, one more new tech. We're going to get machine tools, which is excellent. So let's hit end turn. Oh, both of my spies are going to go on to Istanbul. One of them's going to stay in Ankara. We have to be aware of the possibility that the French will declare on us at some point. So I've marched an army south to keep an eye on the... Do I... Okay, do I do it in order to keep them balanced with the French? I think I do. Because I want the Austrians and the French to focus on each other. And I'm trading to both of them. Yeah, so they're beefing up the defences of Istanbul. If I take Istanbul, I'll give us a border with the Russians. And then they'll have even more of a reason 
to come after us. So that's why building up a eastern an eastern Mediterranean fleet is a good idea, as well as having more ships in general to raid. So we've got machine tools and they've gone straight on to steam engines. That's a that's a that's a a lot of, of an expensive tech, especially when you've got other things that are cheaper. So Sevilla go on to lime juice and sauerkraut four turns. We can get na one naval hospital if we desire. Okay, so you men bark and march south to attack the Mughals here. Let's upgrade the military buildings here in Tangier. Okay, you upgraded the mines. Corinth has got a church school. Upgrade Patras's infrastructure. Let's upgrade Athens across the board because we do, we are going to need. Okay, you build a grand opera house. I'm not sure about walls yet, and we can upgrade you to a trade port. We don't have the demand yet to max out my naval dockyard here. So let's build you into a dry dock. It's got four turns. So get two fourth rates to join that fleet. And my home fleet here is going to be pretty developed in a couple of turns. Why do you have to get the same Admiral picture? Like two or three times in a row. Okay. Then you can have some fifths. And once this fleet's done, they can go out to the Eastern Med. That's where you guys are set to be recruiting. Madrid's uh, repression from the garrison is really helping us out. So I think with this cash, we can just pretty much pick a... Vineyard in Italy. Fleet arrives. More galleons. Good. 27,000 a turn. But we are... We do... So I've, I've explained this to a, a couple of people in the comments. It's really, really important that right now we are scaling our... We are producing a lot of cash through trade. But what we need to do is make sure that we are investing that ch income from trade with um, in our in our actual economy. Because what we don't want is to suddenly find that we need to. Okay, they're really yeah they're pushing us they're, they're reinforcing Istanbul hard. What we don't want to find is. That if our trade gets interdicted, we are in economically a bad situation. So that's why I'm a big proponent of trying to make sure you do keep upgrading your economies. Particularly your tax bases. Because you, when you've got a good tax base, if you get blockaded, you know, it's kind of like BFD. Why do I care? Blockade me all you like. I, I can, my society can function without you, you know? It's not a problem. That's why I really like having plenty of good, plenty of good uh, economic spending. So like, Weaver's Cottage, well, all the industrial buildings are obviously great things to invest in, as are dockyards. So Sardinia is getting some good upgrades, Algiers getting some good upgrades. Rome has finally got a next level artillery building, but I want to upgrade that again to start getting howitzers but you are going to pick up some field artillery because that's that's militarizing right there so one of you is going to stay in Ankara so if I take these two fifth rates and sail to the strait That will block the passage of Ottoman troops. Put the city under siege, but I want them. I want them to char to attack me. You men, can you leave Athens? You can. You men may push. 
Because right now the Austrians have an almighty front line. So I am going to want to prepare for a potential war with the Ottomans. So yeah, Athens, you need to ante up. Let's get some 12 pounders on the go. Actually, let's not build... 12 pounders yet let's keep you know i keep forgetting about the americas because they've got pl there's plenty of plenty of wealth in the americas especially as i should be upgrading these roads i should be upgrading everything really okay there's an exposed port that's not good so this is my name this is my little caribbean fleet you can recruit a sloop so i can get Curacao protected. We've got more galleons. Oh, and we should have some more as well to send over. Okay. I mean, I like sending galleons because it, it means that you could send anything in Darth Mod. And it will work. But I like sending um, galleons, A, because they're kind of tradey ships. But also because I want... I want my uh, uh, my ne my trade, trade fleets to have some capacity to defend themselves. I don't want them... I don't want them all to be sloops that can be swept away and destroyed immediately. By keeping them galleons, you stop the opportunists from doing too much. I don't want to get too close to the front lines. That might entice the Austri the Austrians and the French to maybe get involved or expect me to get involved. So the French have actually got quite a decent little Mediterranean fleet there by the looks of things. I mean, this can be... Part of the problem is that the, the, the there are these lovely little... Uh, models on the campaign map. You look at that and go, oh no, that sh those are ships coming, but that could be a sloop. That could be junk. Yeah, the Austrians are coming. Finally, they come and kick me out of their port. I am curious to see if they will... <laughs> right while I was about to say it. Yes, I will defend... Let's do it. I want to take Istanbul carefully. I would like... Well, I suppose really I'd like the army that I've landed in Athens to land again, to land in Ankara, because Ankara is a very, very, very wealthy territory as well. So maybe I could take Ankara and declare peace. But let's... So because we're on the defensive, they have uh, howitzers, so absolutely take advantage of the fact that they're going to have to come after you. I mean, this field of fire for artillery is not great. Yeah, absolutely take advantage of the fact that they have to march towards you. Especially if you're in a situation like... Um, like I am, where I've got a handful of armies. I don't really have, you know, stacks to spare. Yeah, Bandoleros. Very much the weak point. Good. So the garrison, the mortar garrisons are not firing. So it means my guys have deployed them far enough back in, in, um, Deploy them far enough back to not cause them to uh, fire at me. So you men engage the... So you engage the Israeli, you engage the Islamic swordsman. I mean, you men just work on a hole. They will lob their shots, and I can deploy my left flank further up, but I want to let them come at us. Unless these Janissary Grenadiers are going to be the first thing. 
first thing to come in. So I might speed up time just a little bit because uh, they're quite um, uneven as to where their troops are coming in. Yeah, these can these Janissary Grenadiers are going to be the first guys to join us. There are some camels in the distance, which might cause a few problems. Yeah, I'll pause. Oh, they've started to run. We'll cover the last distance at speed. There we go. So not close enough for the Grenadiers to get involved. Lots of these units are actually hidden, like these militia in their bright blue coats are just blending in. But when they come within range, stand up guards and at them. Deploy into square, get my cavalry ready to move. Okay, let's pivot my line a bit. Because right now they aren't getting the uh, some mutual support they need. What a weird mix. Bulk of the men have hit this unit of Grenadiers, but they did originally hit them. Yeah, I'm not going to use my Grenadiers to solve that problem. Canister shot them. You guys canister shot the Israeli. They're not too. They're not close enough, but. Yeah, these three units all together, they'll do a lot of damage. Because they'll be able to actually mass their fire. In a way that, you know, a one-on-one -on -one engagement is too equal. Oh, and these guys don't have fire by rank. So that's even better. There we go, now they've decided to charge the 31st again. Yeah, just let them throw themselves against the square. That's where you're hitting the Firelock Armed Populace, you're hitting the 6th. Campbell's on the extreme flank. What's got this like Garrison Islamic Swordsman, which it would be nice to knock out. They've changed their mind again, they're going for these Grenadiers. Their square might break, so you need to be careful. These Azar are not going to push up within range, I would expect. Yeah, they're just out. There you go, let's give them a bit of a surprise. To round shot and engage the Israeli. You guys switch to round shot and engage at them. The artillery still hasn't abandoned their mortars. Okay, let's get. Okay, you guys hit the Israeli that are coming back. Garrison Islamic swordsmen are charging my cavalry because they're the only units they feel that they can charge. There we go, now they're routing. So let's deploy my... Actually don't... Uh, let's pivot, you guys. Now my cavalry chop up the Garrison Islamic Swordsmen just to see them shatter. Charge on to the Azar. Those cannons to shot the Muslim at point blank range. There you go. These men are capable of putting out a lot of firepower. And these men that are trying to cross the dead ground towards them. Including the camels. It's kind of perfect really, because any units engaging the infantry will trigger fire by rank and cause the camels to lose more men as a result. 
One more volley from the Grenadiers, please. Form square. I mean, they're going for my guns, but... Might be a bit of a dangerous angle for those guns to shoot at, but there we are. New man cease fire and pivot. My colonial light cavalry will deal with those Azar on the extreme flank. Charge them down. Here are the masses. Finally hitting my left flank. See, even militia can be useful in terms of pouring out musketry that keeps people upset. So I need to get my cavalry back on this flank. You can see the Israeli are starting to focus on them. You guys are engaging the Azar. Those Azar have been knocked out. So these guns that weren't currently doing anything knock a hole in the fort. I see the door is open, so let's see how long it stays open for. There we go. These are really experiencing some discomfort. So we do I do want these guys to keep to work on a work on a way in, an alternative way in if they shut the door. I think they really, they've twigged what I'm up to. The, the t this tactical genius that I am. I'm using the old, if they leave the door open, try and get in tactic. So it will be because something's, something's probably bugged and has an order to either get in or get out of the fort. They don't normally leave the front gate open, but there we are. It's them done for. You men smash the armed populace. Okay, you guys might have pushed up a bit too keenly. Yeah, we've killed the general back here with the mortars. Round shot, blast the seventh. Mamelukes out on the flank, so let's pivot them around. Enemy reinforcements are coming in. Advance you. guys can limber up. Get you guys to smash the Muslim. So these guys, I chiefly want them to trigger the Muslim to attack, the Mamelukes to attack. I want these guys to advance and for the cavalry to think they'd be an easy kill. I mean, you guys could load up round shot, try and engage these guys all the way at the back. No, the Mamelukes aren't buying it. So if you guys could make these Muslim shatter, that would be excellent because I would love you guys to go and... Actually, I may as well go for the Israeli now. Because I know that they might actually come back. So you men push up, fire it well on. Let's see where they're gonna bite. Okay, 
the cavalry ready. So they've hit the square, counter charge them, advance up our front line. These guns are limbered up, so keep on running them up. Grenadier Square has held. Just. Okay, let's bring cavalry in to hit the armed populace. So let's push these guys up. You guys scale the walls. So the light cavalry is doing okay, but it is light cavalry. It will at the drop of a hat just lose everyone that's what happens excellent get these two units out of square those guys are going to be the first axis of advance for the reinforcements but what I would like is you guys to knock out these guys Take the fort. Take the fort and use their guns and firing points, firing positions against them. That would be, that's what I would call a, the, that's the biggest win, I think, is to take the walls and I could start to set up on these on these sections of the wall and just gun them down. But in order to do that, I have to knock them out first. Let's get my cavalry in position to mow these guys down. Set up firing point, charge my cavalry in. Keep my guns actually on a relatively raised section of terrain behind them. So then you guys are now ready to go in and take the city. So we've got Risks of Souls coming up first. Janissaries, Mamelukes, Janissaries, Janissaries, Demi Cannons. Okay, so these infantry units I want probably more like here. So I want the first unit here. I want another unit here. I want a unit here. And I want a unit here. I mean, I very much overspect the amount of units I need inside, but whatever. Let's get my cavalry out to safety because the risks of souls are probably going to go after them. You guys actually unlimber and begin opening up. Because the Risks of Souls are... They're dangerous, but the thing to remember with the Risks of Souls is they have very poor armour. So they take... They take damage pretty badly. And it looks like you can see the, the morale impact of Fire by Rank is huge. They lost 60 guys. Compared to when they fight in combat, you know how well they stand then. Okay, let's get some of these units to take position in the 
in some of these central positions. Deploy the cavalry to chase down the Riskers of Souls. Just because they are so dangerous. But I don't know if I want to push up any further than this, because now we've actually got quite a good little killing field ready. My guns can, can't can focus on their guns, but they can open up on these enemy Janissaries pushing up. They're shattered. They've been significantly cut down, so bring my cavalry back. Still got cavalry guarding this flank, just in case they try something. Yeah, as we've other witness, other behaviour that we've witnessed, they do have a tendency to focus on your cavalry. So I want to run in behind my line and then run him over to the right. Because I want them to come back to the centre. Ah, you guys have got some guys stuck in the centre, so you're stuck in the door, so you're not going to be firing. How about you? I mean, these grenadiers are okay. Yeah, those Janissaries have been broken. Pity, because look, they could be doing some really good damage to them. But they're bugged, so instead you're going to have to go there. Look, they actually responded to that. Some of them did. They all did. Okay, now my cavalry can chase down those Janissaries. These Janissaries are going to charge, try and charge us, but they're coming. They're coming along the wall towards us. Because these colonial militia might have opened up a door somewhere. I mean, they can't scale the walls and there's no breaches to run in, so... Well, the Grenadiers should... I mean, they're firing the cannons at point-blank range, which is... Don't get me wrong, it's good, but... Another unit of Janissaries. There we go. Unloading muskets into them. Yeah, that unit's just bugged. You can see they're already they're all over here as well. Okay, so just push my line up. Get my general involved. Because they've got some howitzers, some demi cannons, and some mamelukes. They are actually shooting at the uh, the wall itself, interestingly. And then there's not a lot they can really do to stop us. Now you have a go at chopping down some Janissaries. Delicious Janissaries. Kill one of my general staff with an artillery shot, so I might bring him back because he's now he did have one star, now he's got two.
So just keep pushing out the infantry. Be ready to drop them all into square at a mo moment's notice. Firing how it's a shot at us now. Push him up to point blank range. Push these marines and infantry up to engage the Mamelukes with gunnery. Oh no. They're getting their artillery just to, lim to limber up. Okay, you guys. Get out of there. Lest we lose some infantry to a very silly, silly, silly thing. Go on, Grenadiers. Limber up. Square up. Square up. Square up. Bring up our cavalry. Counter charge the Mamelukes. You guys stop firing. Use our cavalry to clear up the mess. You men all cease fire. Charge on. If they hopefully they let us charge on, because I want to kill those demi cannons. Damn right. Kill the gunners. Just chase down the Mamelukes, but they're going to escape. Decisive victory. It's always a nice word to see. Look oh, there. We lost. We deployed. We lost 570 men. They lost nearly three and a half thousand. Yep. You got to watch out, Ottomans. The reckoning is coming. So this is why I do want to expand my control over the Mediterranean just to prevent the movement of troops and uh, trade and wealth. I mean, our privateers will lose a valuable, valuable trade route once we've, uh, well, when we've taken over the eastern Mediterranean. But then again, the tax gains will more than outweigh any loss of pirate in income. So the Spanish fleet, the Spanish do have a fleet on that second re second trade point, so they, they're just doing a bit of shuffling backwards and forwards. New model bayonet drill has been researched, which is great. Now they've gone on to Cadence Marching. No Salamanca. You might go on to actually free trade doctrine to get all these delicious wealth bonuses 25 percent wealth generated by port is huge plus 10 per turn wealth is huge obviously that's not it's yeah plus 30 percent bonus to the growth in trade route income sooner rather than later for the trade crew trade route grow trade route growth really because you are going to lose that trade when you declare war on everyone so let's get some road upgrades going i see i see protestantism grow in tuners So let's try tax the Barbary states now. Build roads, upgrade the ports. Let's spend some money keeping this army up together. Like I said, you were actually primed to push on to Belgrade or somewhere like that, but actually I think that's probably what this force here in Athens is going to be doing. We don't need to worry about building anything in Patras. Let's upgrade the church schools, keep the infrastructure upgrades going. So we've got two fourth rates, so let's send them over to the east here. You men sail around to the trade port. The French are pushing on to Damascus. So let's help them. Yes, 
Yeah, the French are... They are not messing around, so we are going to want control over the Eastern Mediterranean's waterways. So let's recruit a galley to occupy that trade port. Let's get a couple more fifth rates for here. You're still recruiting. We can recruit one galleon to go out to the trade zone. We've also got this force down here. It would appear the uh, Mughals didn't really know what they wanted to do with this army. And <laughs> just keep chasing them off, chasing them down. So, yeah, so this, this fleet is growing. Eastern Atlantic. I mean, our. So, this is our home fleet. For the want of a better word. And as we build up a second fleet, we'll send that out to the trade zones. Rumors of cowardice for Ulrich de Lyon. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Okay, then again. Got no money. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with the Americas, really. Could order 66 New Spain, but if anything happens, I don't want to be the one that kicks it off. I might get this army back to Cuba, because that's where the, our main... I don't know. We can, we've got a couple of other recruitment options. I mean, in two turns, we'll have a naval hospital built, so then we'll start to build a home fleet, our first and second rates. Then this fleet might go base in Britain somewhere. The, Brit the French have been repulsed. That's good to see. That's right, Austria. Have at it. Drive. Keep the conflict going. I am going to need to protect my borders with Austria, because it's only a matter of time before they declare on us. But I do want to grab a piece of the Ottoman action. That's why I'm, I'm actually okay with letting the Ottomans keep Croatia and Bosnia, because that means they have... We have buffer zones between us and the... The Austrians. Not keen to make them an enemy quite yet. But in general, I think we're doing the right things. We're investing in the right things. We're growing our naval strength, which will help protect our holdings in the Mediterranean and prevent things like people like France from pushing around and doing too much damage. We're using our capabilities to neuter the Ottoman trade capabilities. They're not able to reinforce Istanbul because of our little blockade of the strait. They've not got the capacity to um, build ships to stop us because we're raiding most of their major ports. They might maybe have one port on the northern coast of Ankara. Maybe. I am not giving you division of labour. No way, Jose. No way, Jose. So there go the Danes raiding. Genoa wants peace. Yeah, have it. Have it. Have it, Genoa. I'm not worried about your your island. I'm not worried about you. Okay, Trinidad and Tobago's basic roads. Okay, again, this is more good economy busting stuff. Fleet arrives. We have two more galleons. Let's get you up to three. Let's get you up to three. You with the other ship. Peace treaty with Genoa. Good stuff. Okay, let's hop back up to these ports. First, upgrade these lower tier ports. Get a couple more galleons on the go. There we go. Let's 
Let's upgrade that. Let's upgrade this basic port. You march on to kill the last of these Moogle swines. You men replenish. March back up to Tangier. Okay. So again, we're still on 27,000, so we do want... We do really need to balance this, because right now our upkeep is 41,000, and if we lost our trade, we'd be sunk. That's part of the reason why you attack regions like Athens, because they can help really boost your economy. But so can doing things like this. So sail to Izmir. We are going to have to fight our way to the capital. So you men can clear out these people that were hoping to free their port. Took a lot more damage than I'd like. Let's get one of our galleys back to Athens. Okay, Greece, Mediterranean Sea, okay, good stuff. There's only so long Istanbul can hold on and then soon this region will be ours. But if I take, an, if I took Ankara, I would then try and make peace with the Ottomans and keep an eye on this border. Because Ankara does have a lot of towns. Lots of towns is good for tax. I'm happy that with the French and the Austrians to keep battering each other because it stops them from looking at me. And so the French did win. They won that engagement. And they won that engagement. And that one. Oh, we got to watch out, Austria. They're coming. They're coming for you. Now they got pushed back away from Damascus again. You were too keen. So let's see how Austria responds to the French. Uh, not very well, it would appear. When Ankara gets no garrison, nothing. If I can take Ankara and make peace with the Ottomans, that would be... Well, take Ankara and Istanbul and make peace with the Ottomans, that would be an enormous coup. I think. Because normally, the Ottomans just send you, you know, doomstack after doomstack after doomstack. So taking control over some of the most powerful regions available to us in the uh, in the Balkans and Anatolian region. Then, I mean, I know Ankara is the only re only city in the Anatolian region. But I mean, I've not got the agent still in Britain. I could do something with. I can see him just stood there. I think the only place I could probably see him going is maybe looking into the, into the interior of the Austrian Empire. Maybe get him to Vienna and do some intelligence gathering. Got a missionary in central Italy. Perfect. Let's get you over to Istanbul. And you can just, by your natural wanderings, see what's going on. One more turn till we get the next level artillery building, the Great Arsenal. A new port in Patras. Let's upgrade. Get a trade port here. Let's upgrade this trade port. Build a light guy to occupy the port here. Upgrade all of Athens' buildings again immediately because we do want it to be. We do want it to uh, to grow and produce income. Maybe not the front line. They're asking to get raided by Ottomans coming from the north. Geronimo Nadal is a happy drinker, they say. So you men push up. See, what if you get ambushed? No. Alright, make for the capital. Enemy raid in Latakia. Hey, that's where the Russians have got a port. Raid the shipyard. Let's raid this shipyard to prevent them from getting up to no good. So 
So we've got two fifth rates. So send both of them over to join one of those ports. Okay, let's upgrade Sandy Bay to a naval hospital. Lisbon itself upgrades you to a governor's palace to improve our tax collection. We've got carcass shot. They've gone straight on to Cadence Marching. I don't want that. Lime juice and sauerkraut has been researched, which is great. They've gone on to reformed naval administration. So what I want to do is get Sevilla working on... Actually, no, that's okay. Cambridge, I prefer you to be going on to reorganise procurement, but I may as well get Cadence Marching just because it keeps... They keep hopping on to it. I'd like a bigger university to research some of these later technologies, but I'll take what I can get. Maybe Seville. Seville, go on to four field crop rotation. I mean, the naval, the naval side I'm not so bothered about. It is our underlying, um, underlying income situation that bothers me. Nothing I can upgrade in the Americas. Okay. Pretty sure there's nothing I can upgrade in Europe for a thousand. Can maybe continue the replenishment of these men. It doesn't look like I can do any... Well, I, can, yeah, I may as well upgrade that farm. May as well. Let's get this brig back to Athens. Let's take... This small detachment, get them up to the front line. Just to protect our holdings here. So you're growing at a reasonable pace. I think Madrid's still the one that's earning us the most cash, but that clamour for reform is just going to keep going up. So we do want to get down to abolition of slavery, because that gets us some big um, bonuses for happiness for the lower classes, which is incredibly important for us, because we are an absolute monarchy. Our head of government isn't so great. Plus one lower classes, minus one happiness and nobility. Great. Plus one happiness, lower classes. Great. And the nobility is cancelled out by the mistress. So you are probably the one that's going to go there. Patriotic fervour. Lots of patriotic fervour. Secular humanism would be great. Although it doesn't look like it actually improves happiness quite so much. Let's hit enter. Okay, the French and the Austrians are going to continue to bash the hell out of each other. Although it does look like it's the Austrians that are rebuilding their strength. See, we're just we're just the Spanish Empire. We're not interested in these spats. We aren't bothered about what's going on. I mean, I wouldn't... Well, I mean... Ah, okay, right. Understandably, they know a city... They know an army's coming for Ankara. So they are going to dig in and defend. But I'm hoping if we knock out Ankara and Istanbul at the same time, in the same turn, they might sue for peace. And that may draw us into war with Russia... That's the thing to bear in mind. Lots of good port upgrades. Iron Master's work upgrades. Seminary in Morea. Seville's got a modern university. And Rome's got a arsenal upgrade. Good. Two howitzers. Two more fifth rates in the English Channel. Plus two more galleons built. For the almighty Spanish trade empire. One more turn for one fifth rate and then you're done. Can you actually get one more? No, can't squeeze in one more. Then we want to take this sloop. 
Just dump the agent on the coast. So I'm not entirely bothered about getting him over there as fast as possible. I don't mind him doing a bit of intelligence collection on the way through Europe. So... We can't upgrade to commercial basins yet. But we can get everything but... Dockyard isn't necessary yet for you. Get a governor's house. Upgrade the Iron Master's works. Upgrade you to a commercial base and get you back to here. Let's give Gibraltar a government upgrade. Uh, Lisbon doesn't really need a cannon foundry yet. Yeah, one more turn, then this force will be ready to sail over. See, this is the thing, we're actually we're not actually gaining any more income right now because we're driving down the cost of our trade goods, so I'm actually gonna stop building trade ships. Because you can see it's not actually We aren't seeing like a, a that much of a boost in our income. So we're probably better off actually building up our armies and upgrading the infrastructure we do have. So they're going to sally out one more turn and then the next turn we will, be, well we are sieging Ankara. I'd like to get a bit more replenishment under my, uh, get more a bit more replenishment done for Mr Coronado because some of his troops are a bit, uh, a bit weak. Looking at you, 1st Grenadier Regiment. But we know they're going to attack us at Istanbul anyway, so we know we're guaranteed to start the next turn. Start the next turn with some with a fight. Okay. So then turn. My priest is continuing to march down towards... I mean, I'm, I don't need them to convert Athens itself, because Athens already has a... a church school, but I want them to start preemptively converting Istanbul. Yeah, the French didn't capitalise on it. The Austrians are just rolling back in. Yeah, the Ottomans are going to going to uh, sally out and we are going to destroy them. But looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching guys. Hope you've enjoyed. And we'll see you next time for a battle that will result in us capturing Istanbul. Cheers everyone.